Start it up. Hello, people. How doing? So, well, yeah, slightly more different of a setup over here, and well, look, I just want to change things up, and it is significantly more comfortable for me, at least. Anyways, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Look, I've been excited about this one for ages now. I say ages; it's been kind of like a month and a half or so. But well, for good reason. I'll tell you that much. And the rest of it, well, you'll figure it out as soon as you see exactly what this thing can do. I mean, this comparison, let's be honest, it's gonna be insanely, ludicrously massive. So that's what she said, let's jump in. All right, just aside. So the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, just like the X100 Pro, comes with a vivid color profile, which is of course like a vibrant here. And to be entirely honest, when it comes to vibrant or vivid color profiles, I kinda want more saturation like we get on the X100 Pro as opposed to the Xiaomi, which kind of goes for a slightly more natural approach, which personally I do prefer it. But if someone is looking for a genuinely saturated look, then the X100 does serve that particular purpose better. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just the way I see it. But look, I don't really care about the vivid mode on the X100 Pro as you might have guessed. All I care about is the Zeiss natural colors because personally, that's the way to go for me. The natural color profiles on both phones, the Leica Authentic on the Xiaomi and Zeiss natural colors on the X100 Pro. It is just beautiful, the stuff that we can get out of these. They are stunning to say the least and so natural. But of course, if you are one of those contrast junkies, kind of like myself, and you really want the image pushed to the absolute bloody limit, well, for that, we have textured mode. And look, to be entirely fair, the textured mode has a place. And usually, you want to use textured mode on the X100 Pro specifically for very flat lighting. You can see for yourself, the X100 Pro just looks different now because it is just pushing things so far. But anyways, now for a main camera close-up, and yes, we switch back to the natural color profiles for both because in my honest opinion, it is just beautiful stuff that we get from this. I don't really like the vivid colors that we get. If you like it, of course, you're free to choose. But for the sake of this comparison and, well, any others, I always like to keep the natural colors. Now, the fact is simple. The X100 Pro doesn't seem to be capable of getting as close to the subject, with the main camera at least, as the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, but it's a very, very minor difference. I doubt it's gonna be any massive deal for most people. However, backlit situations like these, now see, I really like backlit shots. I think they can look stunning if they're processed properly. And in, in a case like this, I would say both are performing very similar, at least with the natural color profiles, of course. Now, the X100 is giving us a touch more shadow detail and I guess a touch more color in the shadows as opposed to the Xiaomi 14, which is just pushed to the limit. But of course, on the Xiaomi, if you switch to like a vibrant, see, it doesn't just boost the vibrance, it also drastically increases the shadow detail and reduces the contrast in your shots. So, in a shot like this, where it's very backlit and there's just generally very high contrast due to the lighting itself, like a vibrant can be helpful. Personally, it's not my thing. I prefer how the X100 Pro looks, just with the high contrast. I preferred how like authentic looked on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Maybe I am in the minority here. I could be, but yes, you do get the option on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Now on the X100 Pro, you don't really get any of that. The vivid mode is just for the colors and that's it. Now here's another one, and I would say this is even more backlit than the previous one because I really happen to like my backlit shots. You would have guessed that by now. But I think this time with like authentic is doing a good job. You can see the Xiaomi always has just a pinch more contrast as opposed to the X100 Pro. Now, personally speaking, I really like that, but I think most people who do enjoy rich contrast but don't want it pushed too far would actually prefer the balance on the X100 Pro. I'm just guessing here. And yes, the entire talk about contrast, it's going to depend entirely on personal preference. That's just the way it is. I'm only giving you mine and my thoughts, and that's all I can do. Anywho, let's move on over to the ultra wide camera. See the ultra wide. It is very, very interesting because the Xiaomi 14 Ultra has probably one of the widest ultra wides that I've used this year. And one thing that really took me by surprise is the detail level on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, especially with the ultra wide camera. Because essentially, I used the Xiaomi 14 previously, I've made hundreds of comparisons. Well, not hundreds, but you get the point. And the biggest issue that I had with the Xiaomi 14, not the Ultra, the 14, just the regular one, was that it just did not have the processing to bring out the details using the high quality sensors that it had. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra seems to have no such issue. The processing is fine tuned to the point that you get 
basically as much if not more detail on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra as opposed to the X100 Pro. Now that hike in detail is a big deal because the X100 Pro quite possibly has some of the most detailed, some of the most consistently detailed shots that you can get for photography at least. And this whole details thing is gonna get way crazier soon enough so don't go anywhere just yet. But before that let's check out the backlit shot. So, as you might have guessed, the X100 Pro's dynamic range, especially the highlight preservation, more than anything else, is absolutely stunning. And on top of all that, you get the white balance on the X100 Pro, it's just 100% accurate. I mean, look, the sun is almost at the horizon and obviously it's gonna have a lot of warmth and you can really see it and really feel it on the X100 Pro. Not quite on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, even with like authentic. Now, of course, if you don't like the high contrast, definitely you can switch to like a vibrant and you do get a lot more shadow detail. I kind of like that we have this kind of an option available to us. Now, another thing that you can do, not just with the ultra cameras, but with the telephotos as well, is macro mode on both phones. And this is some good stuff right here. So, the ultra wide macro is not good enough on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. You can tell immediately that the X100 Pro can get significantly closer. It looks significantly nicer as an image and it's just better on the X100, without question. But the Xiaomi makes up for it because what both phones can do is use their telephoto cameras, which is 3.2x on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra and 4.3x on the X100 Pro to take macro shots. And they both look good, no question about it. But you may have also noticed that the X100 can just simply get closer with the ultra wide camera alone. So why even bother using this? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. Because you can get an 8.6x with a sensor crop. Essentially, you have the 4.3x optical zoom and then you just slap a 2x sensor crop on top of that. That's how you get the 8.6x. And it is stunning. Just look, this is an insane macro shot. It's technically a zoom shot, not a macro, but well, look, it gets close to the subject. It gets insanely good detail preservation and the detail preservation in general on the X100 is stunning to say the least and the macro mode really speaks for itself, doesn't it? The Xiaomi unfortunately doesn't really have anything of the sort. To be fair, the macro is good on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, especially with the 3X, it's fine. But the X100 Pro with that sensor crop, it just pulls ahead by a mile. But anyway, since we are talking about zoom, let's check it out. So this is a 1X shot and immediately, the one thing I noticed is that the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's colors are perfect. And the slightly, this a pinch high contrast that we have with like a authentic. It just makes the image look so much better. To my eyes, it works really well. It might not be that big a deal for you, but well, you know, I gotta let my thoughts out in the open, right? Anyways, 2x sensor crop. Now see, the previous generation, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, it had fairly good 2x sensor crop, but the X100 Pro was in general just better. So naturally, I am very curious as to how the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is going to perform here. And would you look at that, this is a 500% crop on top of the sensor crop. And well, yeah, it looks basically the same, doesn't it? Very similar across the board, there's very minor differences. And the only reason I prefer the Xiaomi 14 Ultra here is because it has slightly higher contrast and I kind of prefer the way it's handling the colors. That's it. The detail preservation is basically equal across the board. Now then for 3x, see, you might be thinking, well, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra has a 3x telephoto sensor just for medium range zoom. Obviously, the X100 Pro cannot keep up, right? Maybe not, because one thing that I know for a fact is that the X100 Pro has insane processing and it can do some borderline magic with the main camera alone. And to prove my point, here it is, 500% crop on both of these. The Xiaomi is cropping into 500% from a 3x telephoto sensor, which is a fairly nice and high quality sensor that we have. The X100 Pro is doing this digitally entirely from the 1x zoom, or the 1x sensor, which is a very high quality sensor, no doubt, but it's 1x. And it can produce this level of quality that rivals telephoto sensors. Look, I'm telling you, it's like bloody magic, isn't it? Because you know, there are gonna be some portraits soon enough, you'll see that I took at 75 millimeters, which is essentially a 3X. And once again, the X100 Pro will look like you just took it with a 3X telephoto sensor, even though it has nothing like that. Anyway, let's move on to our final telephoto camera, which is a 5X on the Xiaomi and the 4.3X on the X100 Pro. Now, overall, it looks pretty damn good. I don't really like the colors on the Xiaomi this time around. I think 
they basically look the same on both phones and I really liked what Xiaomi was doing with the colors and the contrast in the previous shots, just wanted to point it out. Now of course, look, these are very high quality sensors and you'll see sooner why I say that because there's a 10x shot and you can tell it looks really good. If anything, the yellow on the X100 Pro is looking much better, much more natural as opposed to this almost like nuclear color that we're getting on the Xiaomi. It's uh, probably a processing issue that we're having, but the detail level is pretty much the same. Now, this is a 30 x shot and it's, it's basically the same across the board. Both of them have tremendous amounts of detail. I kind of like the high contrast on the Foot and Ultra again. Yeah, big deal. I like high contrast. How could that happen, right? Well, anyways, it's just, it's really good and you're not going to have any issues is basically what I'm trying to say here. Now let's move on to high res. So obviously, once again, every single rear camera can do high res. So we have a lot of options going on here. This is with the main camera and when we crop into 500% you can tell that both are very very close. I think the Xiaomi 14 Ultra has maybe a pinch less detail even though the Xiaomi has higher contrast which usually embellishes the details but I, I still think that the X100 Pro has like a little bit more sharpness and some of the finer details and finer parts of the leaves. It's a minor difference of course but well in high res I guess it can become worthwhile. Now then with the ultra wide camera once again 50 more pixels on both. And see, the problem with the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, uh, I shouldn't say a problem, the thing with the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is ultra wide is that it is so wide that making up for it can be very difficult, so I didn't even try. So when we zoom in, you'll notice exactly what the issue is. Yeah, you can tell right. I put a 500% digital crop on both and the X100 Pro looks like we zoomed in so much further, but well, that, that's just the uh, field of view on the Xiaomi 14 being significantly wider. Now, I do want to point this out. Xiaomi 14 looks a little bit better with the wires. If you look at the wires on the X100 Pro, they look a little artifacted and not quite uh, properly detailed, I guess. And both phones have some amount of haloing going on in the leaves. I do see more haloing actually on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, but look, at the end of the day, these are small differences and both of them can produce some very high quality, high res ultra wides, and that's always a good thing. Now, once again, we're back with the 3X. See. 3x regular 12 megapixel shots, they were pretty much neck and neck on both. Now, how about high res? Does the 50 megapixel mode on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra make up for it? Well, it just. Uh, damn. <laughs> Does this not blow your mind into smithereens? Because it, it sure as hell blows mine apart. The fact that the X100 Pro is skipping up with the 50 megapixel mode on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's 3x telephoto. And look, I say keeping up, but. I do think the Xiaomi has more realistic detail, less artifacting, less sharpening going on, and slightly less grain, especially on the face of the dude in there as well. But for a completely digital crop on the X100 Pro from the main camera, this is insane. Well, anyways, now let's check out the 5X and the 4.3X, and both of them are very high quality as you would expect. But with the 50 pixel mode in particular, maybe it's because the Xiaomi has a better sensor or maybe because the processing is much more fine-tuned. But all I can tell you is this, the X100 Pro seems to have much more processing artifacts and sharpening going on, which it doesn't look as nice, now does it? Now with that done, let's talk about human subjects. Well, there's only one subject here, my dumbass. Uh, with the selfies, yeah, this is kind of a screw up on the X100 Pro. It usually doesn't come out looking this ridiculous and weird. The Xiaomi is doing a perfect job, by the way. To be fair, it did fix itself immediately in this shot, and this is also a slightly more challenging shot as opposed to the previous one, so I don't really know what happened there, but I don't really face such an issue in general when I use it, so I guess that's a one-off problem. Now, in this case, I do prefer the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Guess why? High contrast, of course. Well, I mean, that's not news. And yes, I understand. Whether you prefer the high contrast or not, that's going to depend entirely on you, so I'll leave it up to you guys. Now, in this case, Surprisingly enough, wow, these two look bloody identical, don't they? <laughs> like, damn. It, it almost looks like I took the same shot on the two phones. It's just, it's very, very similar, isn't it? Even the contrast looks similar. The lens flare is also very similar on both. Like, wow. Now than selfie portrait. So, the blur in the background is very interesting on both. So, the X100 Pro, of course, you get a whole bunch of options. You can choose which kind of blur you want. I really like the Biotar effect, which gives you this swirling kind of elongated bouquet, which is, it looks good for me. And you, you can choose from other stuff. The Xiaomi, it goes for kind of a natural route in terms of the bouquet, but you can tell it looks natural, but also very stylish and very chock full of bouquet is the best way to put it. And well, the selfies themselves, they look very nice. There's no complaints in that regard from my end at least. Even in a case like this, it's very similar. I kind of like the skin tones on the Xiaomi a little bit more, but it's such a small difference. 
bloody tiny that it, it almost doesn't even matter because both can produce really good shots as you can tell by now. However, in this backlit selfie portrait, the X100 Pro stays rock solid. Its consistency is quite something. Yes, it can screw up sometimes, but most of the time it is beyond consistent. And you can tell that this is where the Xiaomi is struggling a little. It is lacking a lot of the contrast that we get on the X100 Pro. And it's good, but it's not nearly as good as the X100. Now the night selfie, you see, I'm kind of disappointed that Xiaomi still hasn't fixed the night selfies. It's not to say that the X100 is anything particularly special. It is bright, but it is also completely lacking details. The Xiaomi is also lacking details, has some green in it, and it isn't all that bright either. So yeah, not exactly helping either of those cases now, is it? But anyways, let us check out portraits. So the X100 Pro, it has beautiful portraits. I mean, you can tell right away. <laughs> it's just, it looks good. The Xiaomi, it has two modes and I think the way it works is that you're supposed to use either of these modes depending on the situation and depending on the lighting. Now in this case, there was a whole bunch of sunlight falling on my face. The X100 Pro handled it like a champ. The Xiaomi obviously it wasn't handling it quite as well with Leica portraits. However, you can use something called a master portrait which essentially gives you a less contrasty and more balanced look to your portraits. I'm guessing that's how it works as per my usage here and it looks better. It looks like it has retained some of the contrast but it is significantly more balanced in this case. But then in a situation like this, the X100 Pro is doing a near perfect job. It doesn't have as much contrast as I would have liked because the Xiaomi 14 Ultra with its Leica portraits looks absolutely stunning here. But then of course, you're thinking, well, how about master mode in a similar situation? Well, see, now in this case, the Xiaomi 14 is actually messing up the contrast. It's way too low, in my opinion, at least for my preferences. I would at least like as much as the X100 has. And the Xiaomi is really not cutting it with the master portrait. So again, you have to kind of use it interchangeably depending on the lighting. That's kind of the way I see it for now. Now, here's a 50 millimeter shot. And as you can tell by now, right? The X100 Pro's consistency is through the roof. There is almost nothing out there that can stand against it. The Xiaomi with the Leica portraits, once again. I really like the contrast. It's maybe a pinch too high in some of the small parts of my face, but it's not all that bad. And for someone who really enjoys contrast like me, it really works. And once again, when I use master portraits, it's just not good enough. It's too flat for me. Now, I do understand that some people do prefer a more flat approach to their portraits because it can sometimes look a little bit more flattering maybe, but for me, that doesn't really work. I need at least as much contrast as the X100, as I said before. And now here's a 75 millimeter shot. What did I tell you? 3X from the main camera on the X100 Pro. Look at that insane level of detail. It's basically as good as the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, which yes, I'm using like a portraits and you can tell higher contrast, but overall, I think the X100 Pro is just doing a better job, isn't it? Like the consistency, just the way it handles skin tones, contrast, everything is so perfectly balanced. On the Xiaomi, I had to switch between modes to just get a good shot. That's not a problem on the X100. And then we have the 100mm, which is essentially the 4.3x that you can use. And once again, a perfect portrait. Like every single portrait that I took here, perfect shots. And they were not exactly in exceptionally easy lighting or anything like that. The Xiaomi has this ridiculous 90mm soft focus mode which just gives this bloom filter that I absolutely hate. I don't know why they still keep it, it makes no sense. Now of course, I wouldn't forget about the backlit portrait right here. And I mean, take a look at it. The X100 Pro, it has the sun exactly on top of my head. <laughs> it's basically doing a perfect job considering the lighting and everything else. The Xiaomi, to be entirely honest, is not bad for what it is. But I do think that even though I really like the contrast that we have overall, I think that my face looks a little too bright, like especially my forehead. It, it, it's just almost looks like it's whitewashed, which is not the way you want it to look. And I once again tried out master portrait mode and it worked out, it looks really good. It's very similar to the X100 Pro. But my issue is this, if one of these modes could have worked consistently and if like a portrait mode was like, okay, it's gonna give you slight hair contrast, but everything else is perfectly balanced then I could have recommended using it. But in this case, what I'm seeing is that you have to kind of interchange between two modes and that's a lot of hassle, especially when you're trying to take portraits. It's just, that's really not what you want to do now, is it? Anyways, now we have night portrait and yeah, the X100 Pro takes it. Essentially, it has significantly more detail 
and that's really all there is to it. The Xiaomi Phone Ultra is good, but the detail level is not nearly as high as the X100 Pro. Now see, night mode, now that's a whole different story, especially with the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. So we can once again use like a vibrant and like authentic. This is like a vibrant and it looks good. And the X100 Pro, look, it has incredible night mode, very high detail preservation, very good noise reduction, all that jazz. But I, I think most of the time it is just a little too bright. And for that purpose, we have Leica Authentic on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, which is stunning. In my opinion, for my eyes, for the way my goddamned mind works, it's perfect. This is exactly the kind of shot I would want. It's just bright enough to give me enough shadow detail to appreciate the processing and all that jazz that goes into the night mode, but it doesn't brighten it excessively to the point that it almost looks like daytime. Now, I've been singing the praises of Leica Authentic at night for the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Well, there is indeed a situation where it kind of falters. You see, when you have high contrast lighting like this one right here, the X100 Pro, it just works out perfectly, doesn't it? The Xiaomi 14 obviously looks way too dark and to be completely fair, this is how it looked when I took the shot, well, mostly. But because of that quote-unquote realistic approach on the Xiaomi 14, you do lose out on a lot of detail. Another perfect example right here, very dark situation and the X100 Pro with the natural brightening that it does, it helps out. So in general, when you have really low light situations, the X100 is just gonna do better. But anyways, ultra low light. See, now this is an interesting situation. Now, you might be thinking, what the hell is even happening with the colors? Let me explain. You see, I got one of these uh, digital candles. Essentially, there's an LED inside that kind of glows like candles would. And it's, it's very orange, to say the least. Not warm light or anything like that, it is orange. And especially when the X100 Pro, with the higher exposure, it brightens it up. That orange is amplified all the way to high heaven. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra, on the other hand, even though it has very good detail preservation, I would say even a little bit more sharpness as opposed to the X100 Pro, the color is completely off. Now then the ultra wide camera, see, it's a very similar situation. Very high contrast lighting that we have got here. And I think both are doing a very good job in terms of contrast. It looks absolutely stunning on both. I really like the slightly higher saturation on the X100 here. I think it looks even better because of it, even more natural as opposed to a kind of a faded and unsaturated look on the Xiaomi, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Now here's another one. And yes, I get it. I took far too many high contrast shots and I didn't really realize it at the time, but it really is a situation where the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, despite its night mode being one of my favorites, it doesn't really work out all that well. This is a situation where the X100 Pro shines as you would expect, and it really does, doesn't it? Now this right here, I would consider this to be like the ultra low light shot for the ultra wide camera because man, this is, it was so dark. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra looks very natural in terms of just how much detail we had available for us in the shadows. The X100 Pro is doing an insane job of brightening it up and just bringing out the details. But anyways, let's check out the zoom. So, 2x sensor crop at night. It's like the greatest test in the history of mankind to test out exactly how good the sensor crop can be on any smartphone. And of course, when we crop all the way in, look, it's not gonna be pretty when we crop to 500% on a shot like this, but uh, it's close, isn't it? Like, you're getting pretty much similar level of detail, I would say. The Xiaomi Fort Ultra is evening the playing field, as I said. Now then 3x, see, the 3x thing is very interesting on the X100 Pro, as you would expect, but well, the problem I had with the Xiaomi is that it kept giving me some motion blur. Even though I took multiple shots and I held my breath for a few shots, nothing helped. Now cropping in, and you can tell, the Xiaomi 14 obviously has a little bit more detail. It should, at least at night, right? Like, I mean, what's the point even of having a telephoto camera if it cannot outperform digital zoom? Like, bloody hell. But you can see the motion blur is a real issue and I don't really know why it kept happening. Even at 5 I had the exact same problem. I'm telling you, I took like 10 shots, I ran out of breath after a certain point. But <laughs> it just it did not want to give me a good shot, or a crisp shot. The X100 Pro, funny enough, it took a longer exposure, but it still managed to produce a perfectly crisp zero motion blur shot. I mean, cropping and you can tell the massive difference between the two, right? I don't really know what the issue is on the Xiaomi Phone Ultra, but damn, I really, really hope that they can fix this with software did because it's it's very unfortunate. Now then with that said, we are finally at the end of this comparison and boy oh boy. See, I told you, the Xiaomi has a lot of good stuff going for it. There's still a lot of rough edges as well, I guess that would be the best way to put it because here, here's how I think about it. The daylight shots are 
pretty much neck and neck in most cases. And in, in a lot of cases, personally speaking, I preferred how the Xiaomi looked with the contrast and everything else. But then, the selfies. Most of the selfies were basically on par with the X100 Pro. And, and th that's a massive deal because selfies used to be a massive issue on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra or the Xiaomi 13 Ultra and even the Xiaomi 14. But they kind of fixed the entire issue with the 14 Ultra specifically. But then we go to portraits and look, portraits are a bit hit and miss because in my opinion, yes, I think personally for me, like uh, portraits, which is a higher contrast portraits that we get, that's the way to go. Master portraits would be if you want to take a safer route and don't mind slightly flat looking results. But the fact that we have to choose between two, uh, I guess, imperfect modes, that doesn't really sit right for me. It never will. Then we have night mode, which is, look, in general, the night mode with the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is like authentic. It's just going to be significantly more natural. You're going to get much better, much darker, much more natural looking night skies, much more natural contrast. And in my opinion, that's just a better way to go. But with all that said, man, I've been talking forever. Damn. I hope you enjoyed, found this helpful because, look, I had a blast making this comparison. It was stunning, to say the least. There are so many more comparisons to come. I really want to compare this beautiful flagship against the S24 Ultra. It's going to be incredible. And by the way, if you want to check out any other comparisons with either of these two, well, links are in the description. I'll see you guys soon enough with them. Cheers.